Hello and welcome back to the Cloud City FFTCG tutorial on how to use the Octagon software to play the game online. Today we're going to go through some of the finer points of using the platform to actually play the game. First off, we will need to load a deck from the file menu. So we can go up here and click load deck, and I'll choose my Earthwind deck. Um, and then we're going to need to shuffle it, which we can do by right clicking and going, sorry, right clicking on the deck and going to shuffle. And you'll notice that it says uh, the hotkey is Control S, and there's a ton of hotkeys like this in Octagon, and they show them to you anytime you're right clicking through the match. But for the purpose of keeping the video simple, I'm just going to show you how to do everything via right clicking, and uh, you can start to learn the hotkeys as you practice. You should also keep in mind that some things can be do can be done manually in this game. For instance, I can drag cards out of my hand and put them right on the field. Um, but in general, you should try to do everything via either hotkeys or right clicking, and use the CP generation options available to you. And Octagon keeps track of everything, so this will keep any errors to a minimum. It will stop the game from glitching. If, you know, if you have a, uh, a forward that's boosted in power and you just drag them off into the break zone, that boosted power sometimes remains behind. So as long as you're playing with the right clicks, it's going to help you stick to uh, the rules of the game. <clears throat> so when we want to actually start a game, um, we'll load our decks and we can roll to go first. So you right click anywhere and you click roll for first. Down in the text it says I rolled five from a six headed die. Um, and I can then choose to go first or second and draw five slash mulligan. Got there from right clicking, and it gives me my hand. So I can also do that again, and now I've mulliganed. And at this point, I'm going to press tab to start going through the phases. So every time I press tab, it's going to take me through a phase. I draw a card, main phase, attack phase, second main phase, end phase end of turn asks me to discard until I have five cards left. So the game is managed for you that way, um, but you still have to play your cards and generate your CP. So let's take a look at that. To gain CP by discarding, I would just right click on the card and, and click discard and gain CP. Uh, and then it actually shows in this tab I have two earth CP to, uh, to use. Um, and then I can go to monk and I can actually right click and say play this card. Um, and I can click center, and there it goes. And when I right click to do all of this, the monk is now dull, which is how it goes in this game. So I don't have to worry if, if I dragged out uh, Mignon here, she's just going to come out um, like that, and she won't be able, uh, she won't be dull naturally. So I'd have to double click her to, to just to dull her. Okay, so that's why we generally try to stay to right clicking. Um, so when I go and go on to my next turn here, it activates your cards for you, draws you a card, and when you have another opponent, it will, it will know to draw two cards. Um, and from here, I can actually use my backup to generate CP now. So I can right click on my backup, and I can dull and gain CP, and I can discard a card and gain CP, and actually play in a crow out onto the field using that three CP. So I can also multi-select backups. So if I go like this, I can drag and select as many backups as I can. If I have forwards, I can party attack. I can I can do things with uh, mass drags. If someone uses a board clear, I can drag and select a lot of cards to to try to get rid of them. Now, if you want to search your deck, break zone, remove and play, damage zone, you can just right click on that area and go look at, and then you choose to look at all the cards. So, for example, my break zone here, I can go right click, look at all cards, and it will give me a full list that I can look through. And I can right click on those cards and I can move them back to my hand. And that's what I'll do, and I can move them back to the break zone as well. Um, and, sorry, move back over here. Uh, and I can look through all my other zones that way too. So I can right click on my deck, look at all cards, um, and I can actually pull a card out of here. And it's important that when I do this, I have to close and shuffle so that my deck's actually shuffled. And all of this appears in your opponent's uh, chat box so they can see that I looked through my deck and that I stopped looking through my deck and that I shuffled my deck. So it's important that you're doing this properly. Your opponent will know what you're doing. So if you're looking through your deck for no reason, they might be a little curious as to what you got going on. Okay. Um, so if you bring a card uh, to your hand um, by 
by any sort of effect with a searcher. So for example, if you had a, a MOG 13 um, and you wanted to search your deck for uh, a category 13 forward, you can actually right click on that backup and it's going to offer to use his ability for you and it will just pop up the, uh, the, the option for you on the screen and you'll be able to, to look through your deck that way. Um, but you can also just do it manually. So it will, act, it will say declare ability when you right click on that mug. Um, and it will send you a, your opponent a, a, a chat prompt. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about combat. So if I have, let's say I've got uh, Gabranth out here, and I'm gonna go ahead and click play him for free. Uh, and there's reasons why you do this. If your opponent plays a Leon, or maybe you have uh, somebody, you, you play uh, Yang Ursula, you'll have the second card that you don't pay the CP for, so it's important that you are able to use to play this card for free to do that. Um, so if I have my Gabranth here and I'm in, I can go to attack phase, uh, I can actually right click on him, I can go to forwards, and I can declare an attack. Double click on him, he's stalled. And my opponent will have to declare a blocker or take the damage. If he were to take some damage, he could right click on his deck, hit take damage, and a card would appear in the damage zone. You can do that again. If there's an next burst, it will appear in the chat and both players can see it so you know what's going on. Um, but otherwise, we have Gabranth's doll, and when we go over to our next turn, everyone's going to activate, draw the cards. Okay, so from this forwards menu, I can also do some stuff like I can do a party attack, I can declare defense, uh, so if I wanted to block, and I can also change people's power or damage. So I can add power or damage onto a forward, and you can do it temporary. So I can go over to add, and I can add 2,000 from maybe a warrior of light or wall, and I can make it temporary. So the next turn, that's going to go down. Uh, and keep in mind that the Anacro boost is automatic. The game knows her ability, and it's already applying it to Gabranth. I don't have to add that myself. It just does it for me. Um, okay. So, if at any point you have a reaction that you want to use, you can right click and you can go to declare reaction. And it's going to make a noise. And that's an important thing to do because uh, without your opponent right there in front of you, uh, you need to let them know that you're going to respond to something that they've done. Um, so you can declare reaction and you can also show people the targets of your abilities. So let's say I have, uh, my opponent has a, has a Zidane out here. Um, and they've got a white mage and I've got an archer uh, and and let's just say I'm gonna use archers ability I can right click on him and I can say declare an ability um, I would doll him discard the right card and he would want to know which backup I'm targeting so I can actually shift click on that white mage and it's pretty clear here I can also shift uh, click on uh, the archer and drag an arrow right over there so they really know that I'm gonna take out this white mage and I can just shift click on him again to, to get rid of that so that's how I can I can show some targeting and I can make it pretty clear because again you're not usually on mic for these you're just playing via chat um, so uh, it's great to have these little tools in your in your back pocket um, one other thing I'd like to show you is how to use special abilities so if we go into the deck here and pull out a Cecil, then we'll scroll down and I'll pull out another Cecil. I can actually right click on my Cecil and I can go to Special Abilities, Dark, and I can click. And it's going to ask, this will only work if I have the necessary CP uh, and if I have the right card to discard in my hand. So when I click this, you get to hear a really cool sound from uh, Final Fantasy VII. It's the limit break sound. So it's going to show, uh, it's going to tell your opponent, oh, okay, I'm using a special. Um, and this is, uh, I mean, it's an easy way to do it. It keeps, again, it keeps track of everything for you. So there's no reason not to do it. Um, and that's going to be it for the uh, second tutorial on how to use the Octagon software to play Final Fantasy TCG online. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our Facebook page. Uh, for Cloud City FFTCG and we'll see you next time maybe with some matches.